We now define both the cosine function and the sine function using a unit circle like the one we see here. Now a unit circle is a circle which is centered at the origin of a Cartesian grid. The origin has coordinates 0, 0, and we usually refer to it with the letter O. So I'll just write that there. That's O. Furthermore, a unit circle has a radius equal to one unit. So I can draw a little radius like so, and I'll just write R, as in radius, equals to one. Since the radius equals to one, this circle will cut the horizontal axis in two points at the values one and negative one. Similarly, it'll cut the vertical axis at one and negative one. So I'll just add those, one and negative one. The idea behind both the cosine function and the sine function can be explained using a point, which I'll call P, which moves around the circumference of this unit circle. So I'll just add a generic point right here. I'm adding right now in red, and I'll call that point P. And if I add another point right here, like I'm doing in blue, which I'll call A, then this angle, which I'm adding now, is X. So that's the angle between the radius OA and OP. And any angle that will measure on this unit circle will be measured from this radius OA, which I'm highlighting in blue right now. In other words, when we let the point P move around the unit circle, its starting point is always at point A. And we measure the angle that its radius OP makes with this radius OA. And angles measured around this unit circle are said to be positive if we move in an anti-clockwise direction. If we were to measure an angle clockwise, then the angle would be negative. Now, that being said, what are cosine of x and sine of x? Well, actually, both cosine of x and sine of x are coordinates, or I should say coordinate functions. In fact, this point P, as it moves around the unit circle, has coordinates cosine of x and sine of x. In other words, cosine of x is simply the horizontal coordinate of this point P as it moves around the unit circle. Similarly, sine of x is the vertical coordinate of this point P as it moves around the unit circle. So when we say cosine of x or sine of x, the x value that we plug inside both cosine and sine is the angle measured from the radius OA up to the radius OP. And remember, it's measured anti-clockwise. So for instance, let's say we wanted to know what the cosine of 210 degrees was. Well, that would mean that the radius OP, starting from OA, went through 210 degrees. So that would bring us roughly all the way around here on the unit circle. So I'll just add that point. And I'll call that point P2, just to distinguish it from the first example I had here. And the radius OP2 would be this one here. So in that case, the angle X would be this angle starting from radius OA up to the radius OP2. And that would be approximately 210 degrees. And so if I wanted to know what cosine of 210 degrees was, all I would have to look into would be the horizontal coordinates of this point on the unit circle. Similarly, if I wanted to know what sine of 210 degrees was, well, all I would have to look into is what the vertical coordinate of this point P2 was. And in fact, if you check with your calculator, you should find that sine of 210 degrees is equal to negative 0.5 which looks quite accurate on our graph here, roughly negative 0.5. Cosine of 210 degrees, on the other hand, remember, would be the horizontal coordinate of this point. And we can use a calculator, but you'll find that that's roughly equal to negative 0.87, and that's rounding to two decimal places. So that would be negative 0.87. And that's all that the cosine and sine function actually are. They're just functions which give us the coordinates of a point moving around this unit circle. Now, what about the domain and the range of the cosine and sine functions? Well, there's no limit to what angle we can put inside this function because there's no limit to the number of times P can move around the unit circle. And that can be both anti-clockwise, so a positive angle, 
or clockwise, so a negative angle. So the domain of both cosine and sine is all real numbers. The range, on the other hand, well, since the point P is stuck on the circumference of this unit circle, its horizontal coordinate will always be between negative 1 and 1. And the same can be said for its vertical coordinate. It's always going to be somewhere between negative 1 and 1. So for the range, we can go ahead and state that cosine of x is always less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to negative 1, and sine of x is always less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to negative 1. Let's look at a couple more examples just to see how this unit circle actually works and how the coordinates of the point P completely define both cosine of x and sine of x. Say we need to figure out what sine of 30 degrees is. Well, according to the definition we just saw, sine of 30 degrees should equal to the vertical coordinate of some point P on the circumference of this circle for which the radius, OP, is at a 30 degree angle measured anti-clockwise from the radius OA. So I'll just add this point A here. At home, you can go ahead and draw this to scale. But on this rough sketch that I have here, it seems as though the vertical coordinate of this point P is roughly 0 0.5, or 1 over 2, since it's halfway between 0 and 1. And you can go ahead and check with your calculator, but you should find that sine of 30 is equal to 0 0.5, or 1 over 2. And that simple example highlights the fact that that's all that the sine function actually is. It's the vertical coordinate of this point P as it moves around the unit circle. Let's look at another example. Say we have to calculate cosine of 180 degrees. Well, according to the definition we just saw, all that cosine of 180 degrees would be is the horizontal coordinate of a point P which has gone through an angle 180 degrees on the unit circle. So that would be this point here. And I'll just add that now like this, and I'll call it P with a little subscript 2 to distinguish it from the first example. Now the angle from the radius OA would be this angle here, which is 180 degrees measured anti-clockwise. And so the horizontal coordinate of this point P2, well, it's negative 1. So cosine of 180 degrees is equal to negative 1. And you can go ahead and check with your calculator, but you should find that cosine of 180 degrees equals to negative 1. Now, if with your calculator you're not finding 0 0.5 and negative 1, do check that your calculator is set in the degrees mode. You may find that your calculator is set in radians. It has to be in degrees. Here, we're working in degrees, so you want to make sure you set your calculator that way. Let's look at one last example. Say we wish to find cosine of negative 60 degrees. Well, remember, if it's a negative angle, it means that we're going clockwise around the unit circle, starting from this point A here. So an angle of negative 60 degrees would mean that the point P went clockwise around the unit circle up to approximately this point here on the circumference. So I'll just add that point right there. And I'll call that point P with a little subscript 3. Now the radius in this case is this radius right here that I'm adding, and so the angle, negative 60 degrees, would correspond to this angle here, negative 60 degrees. And according to the definition of cosine, the cosine of negative 60 should equal to the horizontal coordinate of this point, P3. And looking at the unit circle we have here, the horizontal coordinate would be roughly here. And it seems as though this is approximately 0 0.5, or 1 over 2. And once more, do check with your calculator, but cosine of negative 60 is indeed 1 over 2, or 0 0.5. And there we have it. So do remember, all that the cosine and sine functions are, they are functions which give us both the horizontal and vertical coordinates of a point P as it moves around a unit circle. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.